Hi, I'm John Rafrano for Boris TV and welcome to the Boris Continuum Complete for Vegas Pro Training Series. In this episode, we're going to take a look at image restoration tools, in particular BCC Smooth Tone and BCC Noise Reduction. These tools can quite often save a shot that would otherwise be unusable. Let's take a look at how we can use them. On this first shot here, I've got a close-up uh, of a young lady. Uh, there's a little bit of uh, wrinkles and uh, a little bit of age spots there. And we're going to use BCC Smooth Tone to just kind of smooth that out and make that shot a little more flattering. Sometimes they call this digital makeup. So we'll go to BCC Colors and Blurs and then take BCC Smooth Tone and drop it on the event. You'll notice at the top there is a, uh, a compare. And we're going to use the compare. In particular, I like the side-by-side -side compare for doing this. So that on the left, I'll have the original image. On the right, I can see the effects of BCC Smooth Tone. And there are a couple of presets to choose from. Uh, one that has less detail, it's a little smoother. One that has maximum detail, which is a little less smooth. And then there's a smoother preset. But I want to start with the default setting because I want to show you what all these controls do. The first thing is the method. There are two methods, fastest and faster, which gray out some of the controls and not make them usable. So I want to start with smoother because this opens up the controls so that we can see how to use this. The radius here, first there's a lock radius, so you can have the X and Y radius be different. Usually you want to use the same radius on your uh, X and Y. The radius is the number of pixels that will be affected by this blur. So the greater the radius, uh, the, the bigger the blur. You'll notice there's not much change as I increase this radius because the radius is tied to this maximum deviation. And that is the setting at which pixels that deviate will be affected. So as I increase maximum deviation, you'll see I get more of a blur here. And if I bring these both uh, up to their maximum, you can see there's quite a blur on this image as compared with this image over here. But one thing you'll notice is that there's still a lot of detail. And in fact, uh, here's the iterations down here. It's how many times you apply this. And normally you just apply it once, but you can apply it multiple times. As I increase that, we really start to get a very blurry image. But even at this extremely blurry state, you can still see the eyes and the mouth. So a lot of detail is retained. So that's what's different about smooth tone as compared to just using something like a Gaussian blur. So let me reset these. And now I'm going to increase the radius uh, just a bit and uh, maybe back off on the maximum deviation. I just want to get a nice smooth effect uh, in here and up here. And it's looking pretty good. I don't want too much of a blur. Now this blur cutoff will determine a threshold at which pixels will no longer be affected. If I bring it all the way down, you'll see there's no blur at all. I usually keep that at the default one. So we'll just use the maximum deviation and the radius here to kind of get a nice smoothing blur. Just a little bit smoother, just a little bit more flattering uh, than it was before. And that's all I really want to do with this. Now I'm going to switch this back from the compare mode. I'm going to go back to the full mode. And I'm going to turn it on and off. What you'll notice is when I turn it off, look at the hair. There's lots of detail up in the hair. And if I turn it on, some of that gets a bit blurry. So the next thing I want to do is use the pixel chooser to decide what gets affected in this image. I'm going to turn the pixel chooser on by going to View Chosen Pixels. And right now the entire screen is being chosen. I'll go to the Pixel Chooser region and I'll take a shape. I want to use uh, inside an oval and then take these two points and make them resemble the oval of the face because the face is, a, is good to use an oval to getting faces correct. So I'll just move this uh, over until it kind of looks like the face in the middle. I can use the Blend region to blur the edges a bit uh, and I can scale it up because that face was a little bit off screen and maybe stretch it just a wee bit uh, in the vertical direction. And now I'm going to turn this on and we'll see that the hair, as I turn this on and off, the hair is no longer being affected and just the center is being affected where the face is. Now the face is moving, this is a video. So the next thing I want to use is the motion tracker to make that mask, that PC region mask, uh, track the face. So I'm going to use track on the fly. 
Uh, and one thing I need to do is it's warning me that I have to put my cursor at the beginning of the timeline. Uh, and so I don't want to track quite that much. So I'm going to make this a little smaller just for the sake of the demo. We're going to start there. Uh, you can see my pixel chooser region. And actually, I think I can get away with doing uh, preview half on this. Then I'll go to my tracker center. And I'm going to center that tracker right on the eyes there. And I'm going to use my control key to get really accurate movement. Um, and I might change my search width just a bit, make it a little bit bigger, make my target width just a little bit bigger. And now I'm going to double click this region and do Shift B uh, so that it will track. All right, and right there it lost the it lost the track. That's okay. We're going to go back to a point at which uh, it had a good keyframe. It has a good keyframe there, and so I will move the region that we're going to pre-render. I want to go up and say clear the render cache. I do not want to reset the tracker. I just want to clear the render cache. And then I want to give the timeline the focus and press Shift B again. And so now I've got a nice smooth track. And so I can check that. I've got a smooth track. I can turn off track on the fly and then come down to the apply and say apply that to the pixel chooser and now that pixel chooser oval will map and track the video. So that's using BCC Smooth Tone uh, with the pixel chooser and uh, tracking. Next we're going to take a look at another problem. This is one we're going to use noise reduction for. Here is some footage. This is actually some uh, DV footage. And you'll notice that there's a lot of noise here in the, uh, in the footage. There's a lot of noise and actually it's not noise from compression, uh, it's noise just from the recording process. So it's luminance noise uh, that was picked up by the camera. And we're going to use another filter, BCC Noise Reduction, to fix this. So that is in BCC Effects. And we take BCC Noise Reduction and we'll drag and drop it down onto this clip. And right away it's, it's kind of made things a little better. Let me close this area up and we'll do a little RAM preview so you can see what's done here. Uh, there's still a little bit of noise, but the default preset has done pretty good on the noise reduction. Now, noise reduction does have a lot of presets, including presets for particular cameras, uh, which is kind of nice. But we're just going to start uh, from scratch here. You'll notice there are multiple smoothing modes. There's temporal and spatial together, or just spatial, or just temporal. You would use temporal smoothing when the noise uh, is from the recording process and so if you have low light noise where the noise is being introduced frame by frame you would use spatial if you had things like compression noise where you just wanted to smooth out each individual frame on its own now because this footage originated as DV there probably could use some spatial noise reduction but the temporal is the one that I'm gonna focus on so I'm gonna open up temporal here and you'll notice that there's a control here called max frames because temporal is going to compare frame from frame. So here's what's happening. You've got noise which is random. The noise is going to be different on every frame. But the contents of the frame is fairly constant. So in this particular case, the clouds on each frame are going to be in the same place. Um, although they're moving, they're going to be relatively in the same place, whereas the noise is going to be totally random. So I'm going to tell it to uh, increase the max frames to three. Look, uh, three frames before and three frames uh, ahead. And I'm going to increase the smoothing to three. And then we're just going to do a little RAM preview and watch this. I'm going to Shift B. And look at that frame by frame. There's almost no noise. No noise at all. Because what BCC noise reduction has done is it's compared the frames. Let's play this at full frame. It's compared the frames and it's determined what is noise on each frame and what is content from each frame and has eliminated the noise and kept the content. Uh, you could do the fa same thing with spatial. If you had noise on each frame individual that wasn't frame to frame, you would use a spatial noise reduction. And then there's softening and sharpening. Now softening is on in this particular incident. We could turn the softening off if you'd like. Uh, there are controls to soften uh, the Y, the color blue and red, 
individually, the blue channel, the red channel, and the luminance channel, which by the way uh, carries your green signal. Uh, so if you turn this on, you can control the softening in each one of those channels. I'm going to turn this off and just add a little bit of sharpening. So sharpening is normally off. You can sharpen just the luminance channel or you can sharpen all the channels. Uh, and then you can just bring the sharpening uh, up a bit. And we'll take a look at how that looks. Again, looking at it frame to frame, I think the sharpening has reintroduced a little bit of noise. I'm not real happy with that. Um, and so in this case, I'm not going to use the sharpening. And I'll just go back and maybe turn the softening back on. And we'll watch that once again. Yeah, it was actually better with just the softening and, uh, and no sharpening. So if you find the image is getting a little too soft, you might want to add some sharpening. If you find that there's still a little bit of artifacts left from doing maybe some spatial noise reduction, you could add some softening as well. Okay, this last example is in a low light situation. I know many of you have gotten into this low light situation. This video was taken in a club under low lighting conditions. There was no way to use an alternate light source. I'm using my Sony A1U, which uh, is not that great in low light, unfortunately. It's got a CMOS sensor, uh, and it's not as good as my Z1. When I went back to record again, I used my Z1. Um, and so I've got this A1 footage that I've got to do something with. It's got tons of noise in here. And so what I want to do is remove that noise. Uh, so let me make this loop region a little smaller. And once again, I will go up to noise reduction and drag and drop that on the event. And because the noise is light related, I'm going to open up temporal and I'm going to increase, I'm going to increase the max frames uh, to maybe look at two frames, but more importantly, and, and if you look at this, I'm going to start here, I'm going to increase the Y range of the temporal noise reduction because a lot of this noise is coming in on this Y channel because it's low light noise. So as I increase the Y, you can see it getting a little bit better and let me really do a RAM preview here. Look at that frame to frame, all that noise is gone. Just by using a little bit of temporal noise reduction, increasing uh, the reduction in the Y range because it's low noise and look at that. Now let's, let's do this one side by side because this should be pretty dramatic side by side. I'm going to open up compare. As a matter of fact, I'll use the uh, the compare mode with the with the wipe so on the left side has no reduction and the right side has reduction so let's let's do a little ram preview of this so you could see this side by side and look at that all this noise here almost no no, no noise over here and once again you could look at them side by side as well We'll do that again. I'll do another RAM preview of this side by side. Look at all the noise here in uh, the shirt and there's almost no noise on the other side. Took what is, in my estimation, unusable footage. I, you know, I wouldn't use footage that looked this bad and on the right has made it quite, quite usable. So that wraps it up. Hopefully now you understand the image restoration tools, smooth tone and noise reduction in BCC7 a little better. If you need more information, drop by BorisEffects.com. This is John Refrano for Boris TV. Until next time, thanks for watching.